Data nerds, Copilot has been out now for over six months and has some fresh upgrades. In fact, I found some unique use cases in using this tool, along with some use cases that you shouldn't be using with this tool. So what is Copilot? Well, it's ChatGPT, I mean, an AI powered assistant integrated right inside of Excel. Like every other AI service, it costs you 20 bucks a month for Copilot Pro, and you'll also get it with all of the other popular Microsoft apps as well. And the CEO of Microsoft made this bold claim last month at Ignite 2024. And I think what we're doing in Excel though, is perhaps one of my favorite things, right? It takes data analysis and makes it available to everyone who has an Excel spreadsheet. Everyone who has an Excel spreadsheet. Now, Copilot allows you to use natural language or prompts in order to provide requests via this chat interface over here on the right-hand side. From there, you get the response you want either in your chat or directly implemented into your spreadsheet. Their demos, which were probably performed on the same data sets they trained the model on, demonstrates how this tool works flawlessly in performing analysis. However, my testing using real-world data sets i found that this has less than stellar results unless you know how to prompt it properly. So let's jump in. So here I have a data set on recent reviews from my course on Excel, which you conveniently find linked above. Anyway, there's a questionnaire I provide halfway through and it asks five separate questions them for them to go through and answer. So let's get into analyzing this using Copilot. If I try to open up Copilot, it tells me that auto save is turned off. When I try to activate it, it prompts me that the file needs to be saved in the cloud first. Basically, I need to get to OneDrive. So a minor inconvenience, especially if you don't want to be saving your work to the cloud. Now that we have autosave on, we can come back here and try again with Copilot. We can see that we have a few different predefined options we go to. Let's actually go to this one of understand, summarizing using pivot tables or charts. And the first thing it does is get to work analyzing answer number one column which is the question of how satisfied are you with the content and structure of the course so far? Remember, there's a mid-course survey. Anyway, looking at the results, we can see that it's only at 3.5, and even in the summary it says it's basically 3.5. But if we actually look at this column, we can see I got a ton of responses saying they gave this course a five. So there's no way that this is actually a 3.5. The problem is Copilot is only averaging these four numerical values. It isn't recognizing all these other values that are text that need to be cleaned up. And I've repeated this test multiple times on different columns and consistently found this to be a problem with the data I provided. And this is my biggest complaint with AI assistants in general, is that they don't understand when they need to clean up real world data. And that's why it's imperative that you understand how to use AI, which conveniently you can do with the sponsor of this video, Coursera. Specifically, Google has recently overhauled all of their career certificates on Coursera with an AI refresh, teaching you how to implement these skills in these careers. Now I've been promoting the data analytics certificates that's been released a few years ago. It's my number one recommendation for those looking to land a job in a data analytics field as a complete beginner. It not only provides a holistic introduction with actual data analyst, but also covers the four key skills in this field of spreadsheets, SQL, viz tools, and programming. And it wraps up all your learnings at the end with a capstone project, along with covering these AI skills. They start at the very beginning, covering the best practices for prompting using a simple five-step approach. They then go into strategies for cleaning and preparing data, which is the problem we've encountered, so I think it's good you know. And they also go into a host of other topics such as coding and generating visualizations. Now, my one complaint with this AI refresh is that all these modules covering these different topics are located at the end of the certificate. And I think they should be moved farther up in the certificate. But that's the one joy of this being a self-paced course is that you can take this at any time. Thanks again to Coursera for sponsoring this video and I've linked below not only that data analytics certificate, but all those other certificates as well. So let's shift gears and actually get into some useful things we can use with this tool by looking at some of the latest updates from Microsoft Copilot. Last October, they released one of my favorite and that's analyzing text columns in Excel. What do I mean by that? Well, question two of my survey is this. What are your thoughts on the quality and usefulness of the problems and workbooks? It allows the students to go through and then provide a short answer response. The problem is, how do you analyze something like this? Would I pull out keywords? Because sometimes I have good, excellent, awesome. I'm not sure how to analyze that. Instead, I can use Copilot and say, hey, summarize the reviews in the answer to column. And what it does is, is it went through and actually read all the different reviews and then summarizes them into multiple different bullet points. Specifically, it has one bucket on the high quality and the usefulness of the content, 
citing that many users praise the quality and usefulness of the course. Goes on about the positive learning experience, blah, blah, blah. And then the stuff that I actually care about, aggregating the suggestions for improvement, where students want even more problems, but they don't realize I'm just one person making all this, so I can only make so many problems. Anyway, you get the idea with the reviews. Now that was only from 17 reviews, which you may be like, Luke, I could go through and read 17 reviews and get these insights as well. But let's say now I had the reviews from all my courses. And this totals a total of around 640 reviews. It would take me days to read through this. And instead, what I can do is select that answer to column again, go to Copilot and prompt it, summarize the reviews of this column. And now it just read through 600 different reviews and summarizes all them, providing insights on the positive feedback, on the practice problems, suggestions for improvement, and then finally appreciation for the course structure and content. And I'm pretty blown away by this and how Copilot went in, read 600 reviews, and then compiled it for me to easily read and digest. But that's text analysis. We still need to solve how we're gonna use Copilot for actual numerical analysis to analyze real data. The answer to do that is actually hidden in that recent Microsoft event. When Satya said, Right, it takes data analysis and makes it available to everyone who has an Excel spreadsheet. After saying that, he then clarifies what he means by saying this. I think Copilot in Excel with Python will improve analysis sense across the world. So I'm really, really excited about this. And if you watch the background visuals during the event, all the graphs and charts shown while Sasha is talking are using Python in Excel. So what the heck is Python in Excel? Well, it's hidden up in the formulas bar in this Python section. And this allows us to write Python right here inside of our Python workbook. These 14 lines of code alone allow us to visualize the monthly average of reviews over time. And there's a little foreshadowing of what we can do with this tool. Now, lucky for everybody watching this, Python in Excel was made generally available to everybody in September. And because of this recent release, Microsoft has been pushing users to use Copilot with Python and Excel, like this video from their YouTube channel that does a revenue analysis for different products and then takes it further using machine learning to forecast the expected results. Not bad, Excel. That's enough with an intro. Let's actually get into using this Python and Excel with Copilot or Copilot with Python and Excel in order to analyze that answer that we couldn't solve previously. And that's at analyzing my Excel's mid-course survey satisfaction score. For this, we're gonna be using this default prompt of advanced analysis to get deeper analysis results using Python. The first thing that it needs to do is load the data into what's called a pandas data frame. We can see it here in cell A6. In the formula bar, I can see it's using Python denoted by that PY at the beginning, and it's located the contents of the data here using this Excel function. Right underneath it, it then previews the results in a dynamic array. After loading it in and looking at the data, it provides these steps for what to perform next. With the number one being, analyze the overall satisfaction level of the course, which is what we wanna do. And even states, I will start by analyzing the overall satisfaction level of the course. So it gets to work calculating the overall satisfaction level of the course, executing the code here, and then a preview below once again a dynamic array. For this, we can see we have 13 results at a five star, three at four and one at two. So I prompt it, get the average satisfaction level score. I don't prompt it to do any cleaning. I wanna see if it notices this on its own. And bam, without any prompting, it actually gets this right on the first try. Looking at the Python code, it maps that text score of five to the actual numerical value of five and then calculates what the average score is. So let's crank this up a knot and actually visualize this, but I don't wanna do this just for my Excel course. I wanna do it for all my courses. And I wanna look at the end of course survey, not that mid course survey. So here's an Excel sheet with those survey results and it's for all the different courses. It's around 370 survey results. So with Copilot, I'm gonna to get to work again with advanced analysis. And like before, it loads all the data in to get familiar with it. So I prompted this, plot the average score of the answer six column, and that's on the satisfaction score of one to five, based on the course column. Anyway, with only that, it actually was able to plot the results that I wanted here. Now, unfortunately, in this task, Copilot got tripped up and had errors. It provided these numerical values up at the top, and I know that my scores for this course did not get perfect fives. They should be slightly less than this. So there's a problem with the data. We need to fix this. So I prompted, this isn't correct. 
inspect the unique values of the insert six column, then clean up and visualize. All right, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. I've consistently tried to reprompt it and then prompt it again and then prompt it even again to start over. It's still giving me the wrong answers. And how do I know this is incorrect? Well, I provided to ChatGPT. It was able to do this a lot easier. Coming up with all the different scores for those courses, they weren't all exactly five, but they were dang close. So what's the final conclusion? So I think Microsoft still has some kinks to work out of Copilot, but I do think based on my usage that Python and Excel is the best method to use Copilot inside of Excel. But that doesn't necessarily mean I recommend it. I'm gonna be canceling my Copilot subscription after this because frankly, I don't use Excel enough. If I had to make a recommendation now, it would still be with ChatGPT+. Plus. I think it's the best option for performing data analysis. And with that, I highly disagree with the CEO of Microsoft. Right, it takes data analysis and makes it available to everyone, to everyone, to everyone who has an Excel spreadsheet.